Hello and welcome to the Dedicated channel. You're about to watch a clip from the Dedicated conference where Bernard Marr talks to us about how to build a data strategy. If you're enjoying this content, you can go ahead and subscribe. Here is Bernard Marr. Hello. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you so much for organizing an awesome event. I obviously have the t-shirt on as well, as you can see. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much for being here, Bernard. I know the first time I came across your name was when I read your book, Data Strategy. And you're talking about that topic today of how to develop a data strategy. I won't take up more of your time. I'm going to hop off stage and it's going to be all yours. Thank you all so right. much. As I said, it's a, a real pleasure to be here with you. This is a, a community that I love and is very close to my heart. What I want to talk about is how do we actually approach a data strategy? And I don't feel that this is something that organizations do particularly well at the moment. For me, it has to start with the fact that data has become or is now the number one business asset for any company, and it has to be treated like this. This is really important. And sometimes we get caught up in this hype. We've heard this before today when, when, we, when one contributor was saying about oh, big data. I don't actually like the name big data. For me, it's much more important that we talk about the right data. And what the right data does is that it is fueling this new intelligence revolution. I believe that this fourth industrial revolution that we're in at the moment is an intelligence revolution that is fueled by data. So what electricity and oil and other resources were in the past, we now have data as the key resource. And for me, one of the most important messages I want to send out today is that your data strategy has to be your business strategy. I find that lots of organizations, when they develop a data strategy, they go around and say, what, how can we use data in our organization? And then you come up with a little brainstorm and then you develop a data strategy or you look at all the data you already have and how you're using it instead of starting from a strategic perspective. Another mistake I see organizations fall into is that they simply apply a data strategy to an outdated business model. So what is really important is that whenever you design decide to design a data strategy, that you take a step back and you actually say, okay, is our business model still relevant? And for me, there's this 80-20 rule that I talk to organizations about, where I believe that 80% of the use of your data should be strategic. It should be driven by your biggest strategic needs. And 20% you can experiment with and you can use for other use cases. But for me, the majority should be focused on your biggest challenges, the biggest problems that you're facing, the biggest strategic initiatives. And in order to help organizations go through this process, what I've done is I've developed a framework to help organizations think about this. And in my book, Data Strategy, and also my new one on, on, on artificial intelligence called the Intelligence Revolution, I talk about these frameworks. And I, for me, instead of starting fresh, I think there are five key areas where we need to explore how we can use data better in our organizations, and hopefully they will be useful. So for me, the first use case is where we use data to improve our decision-making in our organizations. And we've heard a lot of this on this topic already today. The second one is where we use data to better understand our customers and understand our markets. The third one is where we use data to deliver more intelligent services to our customers. The fourth one is where we look at more intelligent products, which you can combine. So it's, it's about what you're delivering in the customer value proposition, whether it's services or products, and you need to make them more intelligent. The next one then is that we use data to actually improve our internal business processes. And the last one is where we use data as an asset that we can monetize in our organization. So if we look at across those five sectors, I can now spend days giving you amazing examples of how organizations do this in practice. But just a few examples and a few tips. So when it comes to improving decision making, what I find is that currently people are simply bombarded with data. 
And we don't really get the balance right between the self-service element where we give people access to great data and hope that they will make better decisions and the more curated dashboards that we have circulating in our companies. And for me, this is a bit, some, the analogy I often use is a restaurant or a chef where you differentiate between a self-service restaurant and a fine dining experience. And for me, the self-service one is where we create these, where we give people predefined things that they can then use to help them answer their questions. And for me, sometimes we fall into this trap of simply saying, okay, let's go for the self-service route because this is easiest. And what I find in practice is that lots of organizations feel that their people are getting lost because they don't have necessarily the data skills. They don't have the understanding of what questions to ask and how to then use data to help them answer their questions. So for me, we need to spend a lot more time on handholding and companies like Walmart have done this extremely well where they created data cafes. They're actually physical data cafes, now virtual data cafes where people can come in and talk to a data scientist and say, okay, this is my challenge. This is my business question. How can I go about helping? How can I use data to help me answer this question? And this is a great example. Companies like Shell, I've recently designed their data strategy. They are now putting roles in place of data translators, people that sit between the data function and the data science team to bridge the gap to, again, facilitate this dialogue. And then on the curated side, for me, this is it's a bit like going to a fine dining experience. We should never overlook this. For the most important strategic needs in your organization, I believe we need to put more effort into cur curating beautiful dashboards that really tell the story, that use a mix of data visualization and data storytelling. And they're basically serving beautiful dashboards that we don't have to worry about assembling ourselves like in a service restaurant. It's more like the fine dining experience. When it comes to understanding your customers better, the second use case, for me, this is about understanding that data has a lifespan. We, this has never become more relevant and more real than in this current pandemic situation where lots of companies realize actually the data we had uh, 12 months ago is no, lo no longer relevant. Consumer behaviors are changing so rapidly. Th situations ac around the world are changing different, very quickly, even within countries uh, where different lockdown rules apply to different parts of the world. So companies need to have real-time data, and this is vital. And and also using new forms of data. Sometimes we are too blinkered and look at what we what data we have in our own organization instead of thinking, okay, what data can we use beyond our boundaries? Can we use satellite data? I've recently worked with a construction company that uses now satellite images to compare their own progress on their sites with competitors, something that they simply couldn't do before. The next one then is to think about your value proposition. And this is where lots of organizations need to rethink their business model. So we have had Netflix, who is a great example of a company that uses data to really understand consumers and then deliver a better and more customized service in terms of their recommendations. And we have seen companies like Disney responding to this, changing their business model with Disney Plus to have the same access to customers. But this is, we see this in healthcare, we see this in so many different aspects where companies are now making smarter products and producing smarter services from smart toothbrushes to even smart toilets. I believe that very soon this intelligence will be a major contributor to any product and any service that every company will offer. The next one then is we need to rethink our how we run our business. So this is your internal processes where you need to think about how can we use data to run our processes better to become more efficient and more effective. And a great example comes from a salmon fishing company, Sermak in Norway. They wanted to improve their operations and they said, okay, salmon fishing is a really old industry. You basically feed the salmon, they eat the food, you wait until they have grown to the right size and then you catch them. One of the issues is health. You need to monitor them. So in the past, they've basically sampled them. They've took, taken a few salmon out, made sure there was no algae and no diseases on them because they spread very easily in these sea pens. 
And that was it. And then they realized, actually, we can use data to make all of this better. And what, one of the greatest examples of AI and data is that they're now using a face recognition for salmon. So they've connected the C pens via 5G to their servers. They are now running a camera that feeds the fish and they will now recognize whether a fish has eaten or not because in the past the stronger fish would grow faster the weaker wouldn't get as much food nowadays they can completely control this environment where the salmon would come once a, a pallet with food the system would then recognize whether they have already been there because they can recognize the spots on their face to see whether the salmon has already been there or not and then they issue a pallet accordingly and we see companies like Unilever that now completely automate the entire recruitment process. So this is key. And then the last one is monetizing your data. This should always be the last part. For me, This the order I've outlined is probably the order you need to think about this. So first decision making, then understanding your customers, then rethinking your products and services, then automating your business. And then you think about, okay, now we have lots of data. Can we use this in other ways? So I've recently worked with a number of telecom companies and we created complete new departments that are now selling data location information so for example before the pandemic when we still had the opportunity to go to football games for example they were they could partner with the teams for example to then say okay if you are going to a match in this city where have you come from where do you go before where you go after and you can now sell un anonymized data which is extremely valuable for them that they simply didn't have access to before so for me starting with those five areas exploring the use cases for your business and then you basically define the use cases you want to focus on and i suggest you pick two or three really strategic ones to start with and maybe one or two quick wins where you can make a real impact on the business to demonstrate success and then you define each of these use cases and i actually have a a free template that you can get on my website that helps you define a use case where you think about okay what does this mean in terms of in terms of where do i get the data from how do i analyze this what are the ethical and legal issues around the data what is the technology i need what are the skills and competencies i need and what are the organizational cultural elements in terms of change and creating the right organizational environment and for me if you do this if you pick your key ones starting with the key use cases you will design a an extremely powerful strategy that will really drive the value of data in your organization and help you to actually deliver on your strategy rather than have your strategy and your data strategy pulling into slightly different directions so so i love the walmart data cafes i think that's a great idea and i love how they've been able to go virtual well, post covid the free templates, what's the site where people can get the free templates that you were Bernard. bernardmar.com, easy enough. And the face recognition of the salmon? Seriously? Come on. This <laughs> is one of my crazy. favorite examples of, of ever because it combines data science, 5G, artificial intelligence, machine vision. I absolutely love it. Absolutely. So we do have time for one question. A question from Francesco. Communication is the key to help organizations fill the gap between people who are not data literate and people who are. How do we fill this gap? Yeah, for me, it comes down to a few things. So when we recently designed the data strategy in Shell, they realized that they have always, always been a really data driven company, but they realized that they had a few issues that they needed more people to be more data literate. And what they did is they created, first of all, they created a community around data science in the organization using their internal social tools. So they created a an, an, an community. Then they created customized courses. So they partnered with Udemy and Coursera to actually create customized courses for data literacy within Shell. The other thing they did is they created 
also very similar to the data cafe. They call them hackathons, where they regularly have either virtual or physical meetings, where they get data science teams and business teams together to really look at what the business challenges are. And then they also create these data translators. And for me, the data translators are such an important role in organizations that they want to really be serious around data that span the business and the data science function. And this is how you communicate. And, and I think lastly, you need to have the executive support and sponsorship and buy-in for all of this. And if you have all of these environment, all of these factors in place, you will definitely create this constant conversation and have this dialogue. Awesome. All right, Bernard, thank you again so much for your talk. Go ahead and follow Bernard, be his 3 millionth follower on LinkedIn, on Twitter. I think you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're basically everywhere. Thank you again for your time for, and for a great session. Thank you so much for having me. Again, if you've enjoyed this content, you can go ahead and subscribe to our channel.